I'm Marty Stauffer. Everyone has seen wildlife one time or another. Squirrel darting up a tree or a deer bounding across the road. These chance sightings are always a pleasant surprise. The graceful beauty of wild animals makes us feel good, lifts our spirits, and it leaves us wanting to see them more. Sometimes it even seems like they enjoy looking back at us. Over my years of watching wildlife, people have often asked me how I get close enough to film them. Well, luck has sometimes played a big part. But being in the right place at the right time is not just blind luck. Few simple steps will greatly improve your chances. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment. It's understanding the animals that's important. With this understanding and a little patience, you'll be ready to begin watching wildlife. We have always been fascinated by wild animals. We admire their form and elegance, the way they fulfill their evolutionary roles. They are a large part of our culture. We use them to describe ourselves. Busy as a beaver, quiet as a mouse, sly as a fox. Wild animals are a spiritual link to our more natural past, and their ability to make us forget the confusion of modern life is vital to our health and well-being. We can study science and ecology, but nothing except watching animals in the wild can explain the miracle of flight the instinctual bonds between a mother and young, the mystery of migration. Somewhere in all of us is a primary need to connect with the non-human world. Before we try to get closer to them, to find and enjoy them, we must first understand how they live in their world. We'll try anything to get near wildlife. Feeding them is one of the most popular ways. Of course, they don't need our food to survive and may even be better off without it. But nothing can stop us from trying to see them up close. We are a nation seeking our roots in wild animals. Zoos draw more visitors each year 
than all spectator sports combined. Many millions annually visit our national parks, hoping to get a glimpse of any wild creature, an alligator or a bear, and gladly putting up with any inconvenience just to see an animal in the wild. Sometimes you may be lucky enough to come across a whole family playing out their roles. A busy mother ground squirrel and her new babies. The carefree father. And two rambunctious teenagers with their sibling rivalries. The wild world can provide all the drama and humor of the civilized world. While father hangs around, mother tends to serious business. She must move her hairless babies to a drier burrow. You may chance upon wonderful things while wandering outdoors, but finding and enjoying them on a regular basis requires some homework so that you can understand the animals and meet them on their own terms. Surprisingly, the first step toward watching wildlife may be in the library. Once you've chosen what species to watch, you need to learn about its habits, range, behavior, and more to determine where and when. For example, the white-tailed deer is a herd mammal found in many parts of America. So nearly the entire country is its range or where it can be seen. But where can be even more specific. Within the white-tail's vast range is its habitat, that is, forest edge and brushy areas. Within this habitat, a single deer may spend its entire life in an area of about one square mile, its territory. But for many species, these factors are not constant. The range of waterfowl, for example, varies when they migrate, often long distances, every spring and autumn. Knowing a creature's niche, or way of life, will also help you know more exactly where to find it. There is a pika way of life. They only live in rock slides in the mountains. There is a prairie dog way of life. They only live in burrows on the prairie. And there is a tree squirrel way of life. They only live in trees in the forest. In fact, these are kaibab squirrels, and they are only found in pine forests in one small part of Arizona.
So you're not going to look for pikas on the prairie or prairie dogs on rock slides, but you will need to know when a creature is active. Diurnal creatures move about during the day, nocturnal creatures during the night. Dawn and dusk, when nocturnal and diurnal creatures begin and end their periods of activity, are good times for seeing practically anything. But knowing what time of day to look is not always that simple. When hunted by man, many diurnal species change their habits and can be very hard to find during the day. If this sounds confusing, just remember, nearly any animal can be active at nearly any time of day, depending on the season and other variables. Nighttime is also a very good time for watching. Spotlighting will help you find animals that stay under cover during the day. Before you look for wildlife this way, check with your game department, because it may be illegal in your state. Whether you search by day or night, wild animals will be aware of you long before you are aware of them. Their life demands sharp hearing, sight, and smell, and their senses outrange ours in nearly every case. No matter where or when you search, some species are going to be much easier to see than others. The chipmunk, found all over the country, is strictly diurnal. Several can coexist in one acre, and all can coexist with humans. But one grizzly needs anywhere from 30 to 300 square miles for its territory. It lives in the northern Rockies, it's often nocturnal, and it's wary of people. So seeing a chipmunk is going to be much easier than seeing a grizzly. You may be in the right place at the right time and still not find what you're looking for. Camouflage helps many species blend into their surroundings. Look carefully. Camouflaged animals often freeze to escape discovery. And remember that camouflage changes with the season. A creature's disposition can also change with the season. During the bison's mating season, when the males fight each other, a careless approach could be deadly. Her baby may look cute and playful, but a mother animal can be fierce when threatened. Whether the threat is real or imagined, moose with calves will chase people away. In summer, a cow with her young calf may be aggressive, and a bull moose more docile, content to rest, chew his cud, and watch me watching him. Autumn, however, when the bulls fight, is a completely different story, and they should not be approached closely then. Most threats to your life by wild creatures have been greatly exaggerated by adventure storytellers. Exercise reasonable caution and you should never have a problem. Now that you have a good idea of what you want to watch, when and where, 
The next step is how. You can set up a blind in an area used by the animals you want to see. Sudden movement frightens creatures, not an unmoving shape. A tent blind like this one will be easily seen by the human eye, but go largely unnoticed by wildlife. This waterproof tent can be left up for months at a time. For something more temporary and less expensive, use an old tarp or blanket, or take advantage of a natural blind, like a rock or bush. Total camouflage clothing is not necessary. Wear colors and patterns that blend in, and a fabric that doesn't make noise when you move. Also, keep in mind how keen an animal's sense of smell may be. Even strongly scented deodorant or mouthwash can give you away, no matter how still or well hidden you are. If you do set up a blind, leave for a few days and let the animals get used to the new shape and smell. When you return and enter the blind, you can observe things you normally wouldn't see. Now unaware of your presence, the animals will behave naturally. Food bait will attract some species. Some people also use bottled scents, decoys, calls, and electronic recordings. Or you can use an old Indian trick. Suck on the back of your hand to arouse an animal's natural curiosity. If they don't come to your blind, bait, or call, go to them by stalking. Watch an animal. See how it moves. Here's how I do it. By walking softly into the wind and trying to stay in places where I don't show up against the horizon. Stop, listen, and look much more than you walk. Look for small movements and body parts, not whole bodies. If you make a loud noise or snap a twig, freeze. Any nearby animal that heard you will also stop and wait a moment to hear more before fleeing. Wait with them. Then, after a while, start walking again. Once you have finally stalked up on your subject, it may suddenly become aware of your presence and run or fly away. Others may continue what they're doing. Try to approach an animal when it's busy, 
feeding, for instance, then it will be less likely to notice you. Finally, understanding what you want to see and knowing where, when, and how to look should pay off. You may not even do all of your wildlife watching in the wild. The California condor, for example, is extremely endangered and easily disturbed. To satisfy your interest, watch very rare or endangered species like this in a zoo. Other endangered species, like the whooping crane, are less easily disturbed and can tolerate controlled observation. There are places to see them, our national wildlife refuges. This one, Aransas National Refuge in Texas, is a good place to watch not only whooping cranes, but also deer, peccaries, and others. Our public lands hold a tremendous amount of valuable wildlife habitat. Those places where animals are not hunted and thus are not afraid of people are much better for watching. Of the almost 300 national wildlife refuges across the country, at least one is within driving distance of any would-be wildlife watcher. We have more than 100 national parks, seashores, and monuments filled with non-hunted, viewable wildlife. Yellowstone, with its elk and bears. When there, remember that you're not going to see the same species year round. The ospreys that summer in Yellowstone may winter as far south as Costa Rica. Many other species migrate as winter approaches, traveling from north to south or in elevation from higher to lower altitudes. In spring, they reverse the journey. Elk herds may migrate up to 60 miles and leave the park, or may not travel at all. It depends on the herd. Grizzlies and black bears remain within the park, but hibernate. The point is, a wildlife watcher in Yellowstone needs to know these variables. In Everglades Park, put your research to work. Remember habitat? The place where two habitats meet, such as forest and open field, is a good place to see animals. These raccoons hide in the brush, but come out into the open to feed. Our national parks are wonderful to visit, but you don't need to travel far to enjoy wildlife. Expensive binoculars aren't necessary. Your own eyes are some of the best optical equipment ever designed. Once you start looking around, you'll be amazed at all that can be seen. And you don't even have to live in the country. Many species that live in the wilderness also live side by side with humans and can be found right outside your front door. The yellow-bellied sapsucker is a captivating example of this kind of town and country creature.
It makes its own sap wells by drilling into tree branches. The sap that accumulates is eaten, along with the many insects that have been attracted to the sticky food. Even other species of birds join in the feast. If you're interested in the birds in your neighborhood or city park, join a group, take up birding, ornithology, the study of birds. You may also become interested in ethology, the study of animal behavior. Now that you have a better idea of how to watch wildlife, I hope you will be able to appreciate all the living things from the smallest to the largest that surround you on every day of the year, at any time of day, wherever you may live. Whether you're in your own backyard or thousands of miles away in a remote wilderness, there's a whole world of wildlife to be discovered. Start with some reading to plan what you'd like to see, when and where. Then get out and do it. Remember, when you are out in the woods, you're a guest in a wild animal's home. Keep it clean and keep your visit brief when you're near their den or nest so you don't disturb them too much. Be courteous and I know they'll allow you back for more watching wildlife. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.